Hi, hey, number two. We're going to take what we've been doing um, about factors and a polynomial, and we are going to use that information to find all the factors of a polynomial. So it says, show that x plus 5 is a factor. So if we're going to show that, that means that if we run synthetic division, then my remainder will be 0. So I'm going to use synthetic division, and I'm expecting to get a remainder of 0. Step number 1. Use SD, synthetic division, to find, it's called a depressed polynomial. So if my factor is x plus 5, that means that negative 5 is the number that I am testing that goes into the box. You look at your exponents, 3, 2, 1, none. So I don't have any missing 0. I don't need a filler 0. So I'm just going to write my coefficients up here. And now I'm going to do synthetic division. My first number comes down. I multiply and add. Multiply, add, multiply, and add. I have to put my variables back in. So that's 1x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Step number two, I'm going to take this new polynomial, and once you have it down to a quadratic, then you have two choices. You can either factor to solve the others, or you can um, run synthet I mean, uh, use the quadratic formula. So that one looks like it factors. So I'm going to factor that. I'm going to make an ACB chart, so when I take A times C, I want factors of 2 that add up to negative 3. So 2 times 1 is 2, that adds up to 3. Oh, it's got to be negative 3. So a negative times negative still equals a positive, and that is, uh, adds up to negative 3. So since my A is 1, I can just put my factors in this. It says, uh, find the remaining factors. So here were my other factors. So generally what the instructions say is to take your polynomial and write it as a product of linear polynomials. So I was told that x plus 5 was one of my factors, and then my others are x minus 2 and x minus 1. So once you know uh, one factor, you take, you take that number and you do synthetic division, and then once you get it down to a quadratic, you can either, uh, it said to factor it, so you had to make an ACB chart and factor it. And then down here in this section, we just have more of the same. Um, you can check back on problems one and two later. I know what 3 looks like, so I'm going to jump down and I'm going to do it. If I know that x plus 4 is a factor, that means that I'm going to use negative 4 as my number for synthetic division. I don't need any filler zeros. So I just use my coefficients. Bring down your first term, and then multiply. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Add. 
multiply negative 14 times negative 13 equals positive 52. Add, that adds up to negative 10. Negative times negative equals a positive 40. That equals 0. Put your variables back in. So I have 3x squared minus 13x plus 10 equals 0. It says you have to find the rest of the factors. That means you got to make an ACB chart and you got to factor it if it wants the other factors. So when I take A times C, I'm looking for factors of 30 that add up to negative 13. I feel like I did something wrong. There it is, negative 10. I want factors of negative 30 that add up to negative 13. Uh, so, I know that 15 times 2 is 30, and that was 13 apart. Uh, it has to add up to negative 13, therefore 15 has to be the negative number. So I would write this as x minus 15 and x plus 2 equals 0. But a is 3, and so this has an extra step, so this is the part where you have to divide um, both your numbers by 3. If it divides, then go ahead and simplify it. If it doesn't divide, <coughs> excuse me, then that's where you have to take your denominator and you have to slide it up in front of your x. And it says, find the remaining factors. And so, if you had to write it as all of your factors, it would be f of x equals this first one that it told you, times x minus 5, and 3x plus 2. So once you know one of your original ones, then it's generally pretty easy to uh, run synthetic division and find the others. The backside is really just more of the same, but it's just a change in terminology. This says I am given a zero and I want to find the rest of my zeros or solution. So I'm going to start off the same. I'm going to use synthetic division to find my uh, depressed polynomial. All right, so x equals 2. When it gives it to you like this, the only uh, difference is that this is the number that goes in your box. You don't have to change the sign. Uh, write down your coefficients. And we're going to run synthetic division. Bring down your first number, multiply, add, multiply, add. What am I doing today? Oh, that's a negative 8. Uh, multiply and add. Now you're going to put your variables back in. So I have 1x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Step two, if you have to find the rest of the zeros, that means you have to solve it. You always have two choices when it comes to a quadratic. You could solve by factoring, or you could solve by running the quadratic formula. I am much faster at factoring, so I'm going to see if this one factors first. When I make an ACB chart, I want factors of 4 that add up to 5. So my factors of 4 are 1 and 4, and that does add up to 5. So I would have x plus 1, x plus 4 equals 0. So if my factor is x plus 1, that means x equals negative 1 is one of my zeros. 
If your factor is x plus 4, that means x equals negative 4 is one of your other factors. And then I knew that x equals 2. So these are my three zeros. I'm going to take it an extra step and we're going to sketch a graph with all this knowledge now. First thing I want to know is my end behavior. x to the third goes down and up. That minus 8 right there is my y-intercept. These three numbers are my x-intercepts. I have an x-intercept at 2, negative 1, negative 4. All right, I have a y-intercept down here. We'll say that's negative 1, that's negative 4, and that's 2 right there. All right, so if my graph is going to go down and up, it's probably going to come from the bottom here. It's going to go through the negative 4. It's going to make a turn somewhere here, go through those two points, make a turn, and go through that last x-intercept. So that's generally how I take my points and I just sketch in the rest of the graph with the end behavior that I know about. Uh, let's do another one. I know that I have a zero at two again. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run synthetic division. My coefficients. I'm gonna bring down my first number Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. Put your um, variables back in. And then step two is you're going to solve it. So I'm going to always try to run quadratic, I mean, I'm going to always try to factor first. So when I take a times c, I want factors of 5 that add up to negative 4. 1 times 5 is 5, but that adds up to 6. And then if I made them both negative, that adds up to negative 6. All right, so that one fails me. When factoring fails you, then your backup plan is you got to run the quadratic formula. So there's my A, B, and C. My quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Ooh, it's going to be tight to fit this all in. All right, x equals negative b. So b is negative 4, and that turns that into a positive 4, plus or minus square root. b is negative 4. you got to put parentheses around that when you stick it in your calculator so it turns out right. Minus 4. The a term is 1. The c term is 5, all over 2 times 1. I ran that in my calculator earlier, and I got negative 4. I hope you remember from earlier in the year how to take the square root of a negative number. The square root of a negative number is an imaginary number, and then the square root of the 4 portion is still 2. You could simplify this if you want to, but 
I know that I have an imaginary number. And what you need to know and realize is that you can't graph an imaginary number. So let's see what I can graph that I do know. I know that I have an x-intercept at 2. That one worked. I know I have a y-intercept down here. We'll call that negative 10. And I know that I have end behavior that goes down and up. And so when I'm trying to graph this, these other two answers, nothing else is going to cross this x-axis. My graph is only going to cross right there because these other two answers that I got, they're imaginaries, and imaginaries don't show up on the graph. And I kind of ran this through delta math earlier, and I think that's what the graph looked like. So it comes from the bottom. It does a little turn because if you have an x to the third, you should have one less, you should have two turns because your number of turns is always one less than your exponent. So that's one turn, and then that's a second turn. Uh, the next one. Hang with me, please, because this one's going to have radical answers that I want you to know how to do. Step number one, you're going to run synthetic division using negative 3 as your number here. 1, 3, negative 7, negative 21. Bring down your first number, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. Alright, so now it's time to put your variables back in. So I have 1x squared plus 0x minus 7 equals 0. When I have 0 for an x, I'm going to rewrite this as 1x squared minus 7 equals 0. Because I know that when I just have a squared term and a number, uh, I'm going to take the square root of both sides in a minute. I'm going to add 7 to both sides, get x squared equals 7, and then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and x equals plus or minus radical 7. So as far as answers go, that's great, but I want to graph that. So I stuck the square root of 7 in my calculator, and I got about 2.6. And so that's going to be helpful to know when I want to graph it in a minute. I'm still working with x to the third, so my end behavior is still down and up. My y-intercept is right here at negative 21, because it's always the constant. My x-intercepts, um, that's a plus minus there. I have an x-intercept at negative 3, at 2.6, and negative 2.6. So when it comes time to graph this, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, we're going to call this negative 21 down here. All right, so I have an x-intercept here at negative 3. Uh, negative 2.6 is right there, really close to it. And positive 2.6 is, so there's 1, 2, and 3. Uh, we'll call it about there. So in between 2 and 3, but a little closer to 3 on the number line. So the graph goes down and up. So it seems like... And you always kind of need to work it from left to right. So it's going to go up 
makes a small turn and goes back through that point and this is what happens when you're when it's not drawn to scale it's going to cross through that point and it's going to make a turn and it's going to go back up so that is basically how you find um, the roots or the zeros of a function run synthetic division and then you either factor run the quadratic formula or sometimes you can take square roots.